Uh, we're joined right now with uh, John Abbott, the voice of the Vancouver Canucks. As always, Abs, good to get you on the show. Uh, before we get into the, the summer showdown stuff, let's just go to the Bo Horvat just for a second. Are you as surprised as we are that this deal has not been done yet? Uh, no, not really, because to pick up on what Botch was just saying, that's sort of been what we've heard from uh, the Canucks side all the way through, and I think uh, there's probably a little bit of, of posturing going on in the sense that uh, the longer it goes, there's maybe more comparables out there for the Horvat camp as well. So, uh, you know, it was something even before the end of the season that uh, Jim Benning hinted that, uh, okay, tap the brakes on this, guys. It's probably not going to come in the next month once the season is done, and it may take uh, deep into the summer. So I'm not totally shocked. But uh, I like the points you guys raised, and I'll just add one final one as well as, I don't see Bo being a guy that gets complacent, right? I don't. I don't no. see him settling in and, and uh, you know being comfortable with his game just because he has uh, the term involved. So uh, I would agree whether it's six or eight. Uh, I, I don't think you're going to see too much change with the effort level from Bo Horvat. Where, where do you see the next step for him? I think he's already in a place where not a lot of us saw him getting to in his third year, 52 points, leading the team. Uh, you know, this was a guy who, when drafted, people questioned his skating, said third line, future third line center, shutdown guy. Uh, he's been much more than that. He's actually been more impressive offensively than that defensive side, that, you know, that role he played in London. Where do you see him going from here like how much more upside is there botch i see plenty of upside remaining from bo horvat and and i'll explain hopefully briefly here i think there's bigger roles for him on the power play and the penalty kill and that might not be the first unit right away but i think there's uh, room for you know larger contribution even if he's on the second unit as he becomes a bigger part of that and and i think that that two-way, that defensive part of his game would work perfectly on the penalty kill. I think he's going to turn into a star that plays on both of those special teams units. And then, uh, you remember, he cooled down just a little bit at the end of last year. I think there's the 30-goal the range is certainly achievable for Bo Horvat, and, and I know that's maybe a little bit lofty because he's going to be getting some tougher assignments, but uh, he really, he's been picking those up even in the last two years under Willie Desjardins. So it's it's finding that sweet spot to break through against some of the other team's better players. And we'll find out if he has as much to prove with Travis Green as he did with Willie Desjardins or whether there's a little bit of a, a longer leash there as well. So I think there's plenty of upside left for Bull Horvath. Yeah, I like the direction you're going with this. And um, I would say that there's been a tremendous amount on his plate at his age kill penalties, be on the power play, be a shutdown guy, defensive zone face-offs, and oh yeah, lead the team in points. It's a lot. <laughs> um, do you think, and I would argue, that um, his biggest struggles kind of have been killing penalties, playing shorthanded. Uh, I would suggest maybe letting him focus on the offensive side of things more, more often. Maybe using other guys on that penalty kill. For instance, Bermitstroff is a guy who could step in and, and uh, pick up some of that slack. Uh, do you have any time for my argument that uh, Horvat not kill penalties this season for Travis Green? Wow. Uh, I'll ha- I would have to see. I think that's part of the fun of putting things on the table before the season starts. And we'll find out what uh, some of the free agents come to camp with. Um, if that's going to help his overall game and that is going to help the Canucks in the large scheme, then I think you, you have to be for that. I'd be a little bit surprised if that happens, though, because I think they just value him so much. And I, I get what you're, where you're going with the, you know, so many minutes and so much, uh, so much effort committed elsewhere that maybe that's a bit of a break. But I, I just think, uh, you know, when, you're, when the Sedins are probably not going to be uh, doing a lot of that in that area, uh, you wonder about... Uh, how many starts Brandon Sutter's are you going to get? I tend to think he's going to have some time there, but hey, if it's going to help the overall uh, outcome for the Vancouver Canucks, then uh, you know maybe that's something that that does get tabled. We're talking with John Abbott, uh, voice of the Canucks. Now let's get on to the uh, summer showdown, which has got everybody talking about Adam Gadette. Did he steal the show last night? Oh, I don't know if he stole it because those two Patterson goals were something yeah. else and then he added another one in the shootout and and it, it, he's so soft spoken and uh, <laughs> I wouldn't say his his play away from the puck is electric but then he jumps up and he has those highlight reel goals and that was 
really impressive. But Godet, I think, is reaffirming he is a player that Canucks fans should be absolutely glued to this season in the NCAA. And uh, coming off a year where he, he had an injury he worked through at the end of the year, already dominant with 26 goals. Uh, you could see him play physically. You could see him play at both ends of the ice. And boy, did he ever click with Griffin Molino, two NCAA guys, I realized, and they kind of, uh, you know, took that title upon themselves to, to represent there. But, uh, you know, credit to Molino for the way that he played alongside Gadet. And there's two guys that, uh, you know, we talk about all the pairings. So there's two guys that might be playing in Utica sooner rather than later, or, you know, maybe even having the opportunity at the big club. So there, as much as we've talked about Pedersen, yeah. I'll say this. Gaudet should certainly be in as many conversations because he was, and not just because of the game last night, but uh, basically the same conversation is being had with Gaudet is he's going to potentially own the NCAA next year, and it's about keeping him challenged. And uh, if he can go through another year of school and dominate, I would expect he's in a Canucks jersey pretty soon. You, you talk about Pedersen, and when you're there's a certain vibe to him off the ice. Like he's got this, like he is he is slight. He's he, he there's not a lot of weight to him, but there is a quiet confidence that I get from talking to him and when I see him interacting with others. And certainly it showed last night and you talk about those goals, each one of them, John, were filthy dangles, <laughs> ridiculous plays that we just we're not accustomed to. Those of us who observe the Canucks quite often John, even from the city, we don't see dangle like that very often. And yeah, I know it was only a summer showdown. How, do you think people are on the fence with this pick? A lot of people weren't sure. A lot of people thought maybe Cody Glass. Yeah. Did he did he pull some converts last <laughs> night? Oh, I think so. Yeah. It was the. It, I mean, there was five thousand plus in the building, largest summer event crowd they've ever had, and they were all standing and cheering for. Elias Patterson after both of those goals. The first one was a pretty setup from Aaron Irving, and we can uh, get to maybe some other names in a, in a few minutes. And then uh, the second one was absolutely individual toe drag from the left circle into the slot and uh, making the highlight reel finish even better with a top corner pick. And you just uh, you mentioned the the quiet confidence. You, Absolutely, that shown through with the fact that he was able to use the space and prove or take advantage of his skill set, rather. And talking to him after the game, he said he's a player that just likes to go with the play and use his opportunities and read the openings as opposed to overthinking it and, you know, really pushing himself to feel he has to do something. And that gives you a sense that there's the playmaking side to him as well. And I'll just conclude with this. There was two other moments away from those fantastic goals that I took note of. He missed a pass on a breakout play sending that would have sent Jonathan Dolan in, and he was so frustrated that he missed the pass there. Uh, it was off its sights. And then he was knocked down behind the net by Gaudet, of all people, uh, and you have to like that as well, going right after the other team star player from Gaudet. Yep. And he got up and he had a little chop for Gaudet. So it, he realized that he was on the wrong end of it, but he didn't just you know, shrink away into the corner. He gave him a little chop. So uh, there's lots to be encouraged about, and we'll see if he can put it together against men in Sweden next yeah. year. Abs, thanks so much. Appreciate this. Uh, again, you know we're going to talk soon. All right. Love it, boys. You Thank it. you.